Good, Good morning. morning. Today we're going to talk about sedation stories. And Mary's got a lot of them. <laughs> Don't you think we are... No, I will say that Mary loves sedation. Well, I mean, it's kind of an amazing feeling. Like, I just remember one of the first times I had it, I remember laying back there on the, like reliving it in my head. It's just an amazing feeling. Well, like, my legs got heavy and it was just like this unreal feeling. Some people, some people really hate that. I know, but I'm not one of them. Yeah. Well, okay, so your first time you remember laying there. Okay, so the first sedation I remember having, I was 11 years old, and they were coming to my hospital room to put a pick line in. And they said, we're gonna put, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh dear. Where are you going with this? They, they were like, we're gonna make you feel a little funny. Like, we're gonna give you some sleepy medicine. Okay. Now I'm trying to remember if I drank anything, like one of those like took Versed or something like that. I don't remember what it was. But I also remember that they were like, um, now we have to put this little plastic tube up your bum. And I'm like, what? And I, okay, so Peter was like, you need to tell everybody that you haven't always been compliant. Yeah. <laughs> So the reality is, I haven't always been super compliant with the doctor's orders. This is one of my favorite stories from Mary's childhood. So basically, so I was 11, I was in the hospital, and they were like, um, so we're gonna put this thing up your bum, and I was like, what? And I was like, oh, could I see it? And they handed me the package, and the girl was explaining it, and I was like, interesting. And I stood up, and I walked into my bathroom, uh, right off my room, and locked the door. Did you take whatever it was with you? I remember oh like looking at it, like I was in the bathroom, like starting to kind of panic, like what is happening? I mean, it was all new to me and I just was, I was freaking out. And so- What, what was your strategy? Were you gonna like, you just didn't think this through. You were just gonna lock yourself in there and- That was the solution. <laughs> lock myself with said torture device in the bathroom. And they were like, honey, it's okay, it's okay. And then I don't remember exactly how it like ended up, but my mom and dad were there, so they ended up talking me through it and getting me out. So I don't, I- <laughs> I'm picturing like a hostage situation where they're like negotiating with you through yes. the door. Yes, yes. I don't think I can do that. What are your demands? What are my what? What are your demands? What do you want? Oh. That is kind of what it was like. But I think the end result was, Mary, we all have to do things we don't like. You need to come out in a very loving but truthful way. So I came out and my parents were right by my side as they jammed that pick line up my arm and whatever. So the other part of the story is that the sedation, whatever it was that with that small piece of plastic that, you know, and <laughs> um, <laughs> It didn't work. So I was completely aware for the entire procedure and I just remember there was blood, but I was fine. I just wanted to see it. I was like, oh, that was like the first. Is that the beginning of your? Like, I need to see what's going on. And then, <gasps> God bless Excuse you. Excuse me. So, <gasps> <laughs> startling. Mm. Bless you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to see, but they were like, no, you shouldn't look because it was a lot of blood and whatever. I think that pick line insertion has come a long way since then. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard that it's gotten easier. But anyway, the story goes, the sedation did not kick in until about 20 minutes after they put the pick line in. Everybody left the room and apparently for the next like two hours, all I could do was stare, I'm like laying in the bed, staring out my door into the hallway, the hospital hallway, and I kept saying, what is the blue light? What is that blue light? I see a blue light. And so the sedation or whatever it was kicked in and 
off I went into blue light la la land. And I do remember that. I remember parts of that. And I remember that my mom took me down the hallway later that evening, like when I came to, and showed me the blue light in the ceiling. And I was like, that's it? It looked so much cooler, like when I was laying in my bed looking out the door. Uh, Life looks cooler when you're sedated, I guess. Yeah. Oh, can I tell my sedation story? Yes, of course. Well, I had laughing gas because I had a cyst under my tongue. It was weird. And I don't know if it was the laughing gas or if it was real life, but I saw my tongue pulled out of my mouth. I I don't know. I, I, I just I remember know. laying there and it's like, you're worry-free, but I was a little worried that I could see my tongue. Yeah, I wonder if it can actually stretch that far. I don't know, maybe. Anyways, did you did got. you recover okay? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Looks good to me. <laughs> um, another story I remember was I was getting another pick line, and I was in the ER. Oh, I bet that's an Amazon delivery. I guess we're getting an Amazon delivery. You were in the ER. I was in the ER, or I don't know. I think it was the ER waiting to get a pick line and um, they had tried, I think they had given me Versed, like just oral Versed, and they'd given me a couple of doses of it, something to make me feel loopy. And they had tried in both arms to get the pick line and like scar tissue or something was preventing these pick lines from being able to go in. And I remember they said, or I was kind of like, I was super loopy and I was like, I'm not gonna leave here till I have a pick line. <laughs> and they were like, okay, if you're if you're okay with us continuing, and I was like, yeah. So I remember they walked me down the hallway to the like little OR that they had, and I was like stumbling down the OR, and I just remember crashing headfirst into the bed, and then I woke up saying, Touch my tongue. Touch my Touch tongue. Touch my tongue. I apparently they gave me more sleepy medicine and I was actually asleep and they got the pick line in and when I woke up I was asking my sister and my mom who were standing right next to me to touch my tongue because it felt huge and furry. It wow. wasn't furry and it wasn't huge. So that happened. That happened. And then there was a time that Mary was in Chicago and she had a splenic infarction. Now this wasn't sedation, it was like heavy duty pain meds because an infarction is basically when a part of your organ dies, right? Or That's like has a stroke. That's how explained it to us. I think. So like basically her spleen was like freaking out and yeah. she was in a excruciating pain. This was the first time it had ever happened. It was my first pain issue in life and I was in college and I was living here in Boston. She was in Chicago. We were we were engaged doing long distance and I'm like <coughs> I'm like freaking out a little bit cuz she well, I mean, you were in just excruciating pain which I, that was new. Like we Yeah. We you know, we've been journeying through cystic fibrosis in our dating years, but there hadn't been pain like this before. Right. And so I'm like she okay? And then I call her and... I was in the hospital at this point. Yeah, they admitted her through the ER and they had given her pain meds and she was pretty loopy. I didn't realize I was loopy. And I don't, I don't quite remember how the conversation went. I think the conversation was something like this. Here, get your phone. Okay. <laughs> You're like, I miss you. I miss you too. I wish I was there. <sighs> don't worry, Sherbert's doing it. And I was like, Sherbert's doing it? And in my head, that made total sense. I don't know what sense that it made. I don't know if I was eating Sherbert. Did they give you Sherbert? I it's don't been really remember. Good. But I also had another conversation with another friend, and I told them something about a pink elephant. I don't remember what, but apparently there was a pink elephant in the conversation, and I did not know that I was feeling funny. Like, I didn't know. So that happened. I was like, I. You were probably it, more concerned after that. I was more concerned. It was slightly funny that Sherbert was doing it, but I guess I just kind of felt like, oh, I just, I guess I just got replaced by Sherbert. Sorry. But. I'm anyways. trying to think of any other, like, good 
stories. I'm sure there's probably more to come. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you guys for watching and for listening and laughing with us at the realities of life. And we make new vlogs every day uh, showing what everyday life with cystic fibrosis looks like. So and we try to laugh about it because let's be real, if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry. So or hide in the bathroom with the sedative. Yeah, oops. All right, guys. Live and learn. As always. We will see you tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. And we can't end without the Ollie boy. Say thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>